Okay, good morning. I'm Mojo Morris Jones. We're going to talk about uh, continuing our series on defensive play uh, and secondhand play. Last week we talked about secondhand low and why we play secondhand low. And now we're going to talk about the exceptions. And of course, you knew there had to be exceptions of when you don't play secondhand low. So let's take a look at this situation here. We're holding the, the king, the queen, and the jack. And let's say that declarer leads a low card. And if you look at the dummy, and that's impor important to do, is look at the dummy and see what, what's happening. What is Declare going to play? I want you to recognize, first of all, that if you play second hand low in this situation, Declare could win a trick with the 10. I'm not saying that they will. I'm saying that Declare could. But it's absolutely right for you to play a card that forces Declare to play their ace. And you know, if uh, if you give Declare the opportunity to win a trick with the 10, if you play the, the, the three, Declare's 10 will win. They're going to get two tricks. They were only entitled to one. Uh, and they're always getting their ace, of course. So you can uh, keep that from happening by playing your jack, your queen, or your king. And you can see you're not really giving anything away. If we look at all of the cards, Declare is not going to get a second trick pretty much no matter what you do. So uh, this is called, I want to talk about this process because it's called splitting your honors. It's when you have a sequence uh, of honors or you have several honors that are between the cards in the dummy. And, uh, and when you can see them this way, uh, when you split them, you force Declare to play their higher ones. I'm going to change the situation a little bit so it's not quite as obvious. In this instance, Declarer leads the four. Now we can see here in the dummy, there's the ace and the 10. We have the queen and the jack. Uh, is this a time to, to split or not? The key is we can't see where the king is. Our partner could have the king, and if they do, well, that's great. It will win if Declarer plays low. But there is a chance that Declarer has the king. And if Declarer has the king, if we were to play low here, let's say we played the three, and Declarer put in the 10, taking a deep finesse, we would be very disappointed. Declare would be getting a trick that they're not entitled to. So what do we do? We split our honors. When it goes like this, we'll split the queen and the jack. As they say, sp split your honors. You're forcing the ace to, to play. And that allows, that keeps Declare to only two tricks in the suit. He gets his ace, he gets his king, but he can't get the 10 or the eight. So splitting your honors can be important. And let's look at some more situations. Here's one where in the dummy, you see the ace, the king, and the 10. Now, in this instance, if you split your honors by playing either the queen or the jack, declarer always has a card to cover it. In the previous examples, there was only one cover card in the dummy, and you had two in your hand. Now is the time to not split your honors. Give declarer the opportunity to make a mistake. Now, it's true that declarer could play the 10 in this instance and win a trick and win three tricks, uh, but he may not. He might play the ace or the king. And if he does that, now you're in a situation where you can split and you can guarantee promoting a trick for your side. Um, when, so, so the thing is when the Clara has cards to cover both of your honors in your card, don't split. Uh, if, if you're splitting, will be covered both times. There's no reason to split. Here's uh, one other example, and like everything in Bridge, we have to look at, at the entire situation. Let's look at this case, where Declare leads low towards a long suit in the dummy. You've got, a, you've got three of the cards. I can see six of them here in the dummy. That's nine. There's a good chance that either partner or Declare is singleton. And I just want you to consider this possibility. You may not be able to predict it. But if so let's say that we split in this case, hoping to protect our queen and partner plays the ace or declare plays the ace rather, and then partner puts their singleton king on the trick. So things like that can happen. I know they, they probably never happen to you, but they have happened to me occasionally. Uh, and uh, you have to, you, you, you may not see them coming, but consider it as a possibility. So uh, let's take out the uh, annotation tools. Let's, let's practice this. Let's say that declarer leads the two. And if you can find your annotation tool up top, um, pick a card to play 
from this holding. We've got the jack, the 10, and the four. So you want to make a click. Here in the dummy is the queen, the nine, and the five. What card should we play? Do we split? Okay, we've got a few people saying the four. Another one saying the 10. This is actually this hand. Let's look at all of the cards and see what's going on here. Notice that Declare has the queen and the king. They're entitled to one to one trick. But if we play low, that wouldn't that would not work. If we played low in this instance, Declare could actually force the ace with the nine. And I'm not saying that, that they would, but some declarers will take a deep finesse when they're missing two cards. They're finessing against the jack and the 10. Let me clear off the, an the annotations and show you this again. The right card to play in this instance is to split your honors and to put it in the 10. It protects against the nine winning a trick. Let's do this again. Let's say declarer leads the two. This one's a little more subtle. You want to choose a card, your second hand to play. Okay, we're clicking on the 10. Okay, good. Let's stop doing that. And let's take a look at all of the cards. Now, what's the important missing card? It's the jack. Um, the, notice that the jack is in declarer's hand here. It could be in your partner's hand. But if it's in declarer's hand, that's when it's most important to split your honors. And these aren't touching exactly. You're missing the jack. But notice that now that you can see declarer's hand, it's exactly correct to put in the 10. Um, in fact, if you didn't put in the 10, there is a possibility that Declare is taking a deep finesse against the queen and the 10. They could play the nine and it would actually win the trick. You need to split the honors here in this instance. One more example, then I'm going to go to another exercise. The two is led from the Declare's hand. You have the jack and the 10. Look over in the dummy. There's the king, the queen, and the nine. What's the right card to play in this instance? Mm -hmm. Between the honors, the jack and the 10 doesn't matter. But this is not the case where you split. Notice that if you play the 10, the queen is there to cover it. If you play the jack, the king is there to cover it. In other words, declarer has cards to cover both of your split honors. So in this instance, the correct card to play is the four. Um, now, it's true that the nine might be there to win a trick, but actually partner has the ace in this instance and we didn't we don't know that um when the de when declarer has cards to cover both of your honors in the dummy don't split because uh you you won't accomplish anything all it does is it just helps out declarer in fact it, it promotes a trick with the nine if, in that instance if you do all right let's um i'm going to switch sides of the table and move to the uh the other side and we're going to look at a, another case where you also do not play second hand low. This is interesting. This one's kind of obvious. If uh, Declare leads the queen from the dummy, notice I've put the dummy on the right side of the table. What's the right card to play here? It's gotta be the king, right? This one's kind of obvious. All right, don't, don't annotate right now. Let me go through the examples. We, we have to play the king because we need to protect our jack and our 10. And even though Declare wins with the ace, we've held the Declare to one trick in the suit. If we were to not cover the queen, right, if uh, the queen were led from the dummy and we didn't cover, Declare would win a trick with the queen and then later on with the ace. So they would get two tricks. They're only entitled to one. Now, this is a fairly obvious situation, but let's do, <clears throat> let's make it a little less obvious. Let's say now we can't see the jack or the 10. Where are they? Now, they're either in Declare's hand or your partner's hand. Let's just uncover all the cards and see where they are. Now you can see our partner has the jack and the 10, and it's still correct to cover an honor with an honor, cover the queen with the king. And this way we hold the Claire to one trick in the suit, just the ace, and your partner's jack and 10 are now high. So we've held them to one trick instead of two. In that instance, we couldn't see the jack or the 10, and they were both in our partner's hand. But that's not always going to be the situation, is it? Let's say the partner has one of the two. They've got the 10, but Declare has the jack. Is it still right to cover? It is. We need to protect our partner's jack or 10. So we're going to play the king. And now Declare gets a trick with the jack, but they don't get one with the 10. And that's because we played our king. 
If we play low, declarer gets all the tricks in the suit. Um, we uh, declarer gets the opportunity to, to finesse against the ten, uh, and it can work out that way. It's still right to cover if your partner has one of the two, either the jack or the ten. Um, so finally, what if declarer has all the tricks that are missing? Let's say in this instance, you can see the jack and the ten, and they're sitting there in the dummy. Here they are, right here. Declarer leads the queen. Is it right to cover? No, don't cover. In fact, if you look at the exact situation, what happens if you don't cover? Well, the queen wins, that's true. Um, and now declarer can lead another trick to their ace, but that <laughs> now your king is set up to win a trick later. When you can see all of the missing cards, the jack or the 10, it's correct to not cover. Don't cover an honor. And what, what, I, uh, what I look for here in this instance is a parade, if you will. The Queen Jack 10, it's a parade of honors coming at you. Don't cover until the last card of the parade is led. All right, so let's, let's practice this a little bit. Now I want to have you uh, uh, practice covering uh, or choosing a card. So let's say that the Queen is led. Let's see. Let's say that the uh, Jack is led from the dummy. What's the card that you want to choose? in this instance. OK, we're all going to cover an honor. Now let's look and see if this is correct. It actually is correct. And what we're doing by covering the jack in this instance is that we're protecting the 10 in our partner's hand. We're holding declarer to two tricks, the ace and the king. That's all they get. If we don't cover, the jack will win, and declarer gets three tricks instead of two. Let's do this again. I'll clear off the annotations. Uh, this time again, declarer leads the jack from the dummy. What's the right card to play? Is it second hand low? It actually, let's look at this one. If we don't cover in this case, <laughs> what happens if we don't cover? Let's look at all the cards. If we, let's say that we play low, as, as we all chose, our partner now wins, let's see, we play low, our partner now wins the king, but now declarer gets a trick with the queen because, uh, let, let's see, our partner's on lead. You can see how this happens. The queen is now behind our ace and declarer gets one trick. Declarer gets one trick. That's important. So the playing low in this instance was not correct. Let's look at what happens when we cover. The jack is led. We're covering it with our ace. I know that sounds, it looks a little crazy, but if we cover with the ace, Declarer plays, let's see, we cover with the ace, Declarer plays low, and our partner plays low. Um, if we lead the suit now, we can lead the 10, in fact. Uh, notice that the queen is now trapped between partners king and nine. We get all the tricks. It actually is correct to cover the honor with your honor in this case. One more instance. This time, the jack is led from the dummy. What's the right card for you to play? This is the time when you don't cover. <laughs> you knew I was going to say that, didn't you? Why is that? All right, we're looking at a sequence of cards. Here's the 10, the 9, and the 8. The jack, the 10, and the 9, and the 8. This is what I call a parade. You've got a parade of honors all lined up, ready to uh, attack your, your king. Um, here you don't cover, and notice what happens when you don't. If you don't cover, uh, it's true, declarer wins a trick with, well, actually, declarer doesn't win a trick with the jack. Your partner's queen wins the trick. And now declarer gets a trick with their ace. I'll just play these cards out. Declarer gets a trick with their ace, but your king is now protected. So the, the rule of thumb is when you see a parade of honor cards all lined up, stacked up in the dummy, your plan is to not cover until the last one is played. And these are honors. So when the jack is led from the dummy, we don't cover in this instance. That's because the 10, the 9, and the 8 are right there visible behind them. Okay, that's it for this morning, and we're going to play some bridge at 10 again at, uh, this afternoon.